The U.S. Virgin Islands, not to be mistaken with the British Virgin Islands, are located roughly 40 kilometers east of Puerto Rico. The history of the U.S. Virgin Islands is very different compared to the history of Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. It's believed that the first residents of the chain of islands were the Sibini, Caribs, and the Arawaks. In 1493, Christopher Columbus arrived on the islands and decided to name them the Virgin Islands because their beauty reminded him of the beautiful St. Ursula and her 11,000 virgins. But it wasn't until the 1600s that European countries started to take significant interest in the islands. In the 1620s, England and Holland teamed up to colonize the island of St. Croix. However, Spain decided it also wanted St. Croix and invaded the island shortly after. But soon after this, France decided to step in and removed Spain. The island of St. Croix was a French colony until the year 1733, when it was purchased by Denmark. Denmark had a huge presence in the Caribbean during this time. The Danish West India Company colonized the island of St. Thomas in 1665 and then St. John in 1694, and together, the three islands of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John would form the Danish West Indies. This name might sound familiar to you because it served as one of the main locations in the triangular slave trade. The triangular trade brought slaves from Africa to the Caribbean, including the Danish West Indies, where they produced molasses and rum that would be sent to Europe, and in turn, European goods were sent back to the islands. So when Denmark settled the Danish West Indies, they quickly started sugarcane plantations on St. John and St. Croix and set up a slave trading post on St. Thomas. By this point, European settlers had completely destroyed the indigenous populations on these islands as a result of the many diseases they brought with them and the incredibly harsh labor conditions they forced them into. An entire civilization was wiped out and the indigenous population no longer exists in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Denmark repopulated the island's labor force with slaves from Africa and soon the Virgin Islands became a major trade hub and established a huge plantation economy, mainly producing sugar. It wasn't long before the number of slaves on the island significantly outnumbered the number of colonists. There were several slave rebellions on the islands that lasted years and years. On July 3rd, 1848, following a particularly violent slave rebellion, slavery was finally abolished in the Danish West Indies and all enslaved people were freed. Today, U.S. Virgin Islanders continue to celebrate Emancipation Day every year on July 3rd. However, life immediately following emancipation was still extremely difficult for newly freed Virgin Islanders. People struggled to make ends meet because the land had already been exhausted and the plantations were small and outdated. Labor riots continued over the next years because of the failing economy and strict labor laws. The U.S. began its negotiations with Denmark to purchase the Danish West Indies after the end of the Civil War in the 1860s. Once slavery was abolished and they could no longer rely on free labor, the islands became too expensive for Denmark to maintain, and the U.S. wanted the islands as an economic and national security asset. The two countries couldn't seem to agree on a deal, but once World War I began, the U.S. became even more intent on settling this deal. The U.S. was worried that Germany was going to annex Denmark, giving them the ability to launch an attack on the U.S. from the Danish West Indies. This really fueled negotiations, and the U.S. basically told Denmark that if they didn't sell them the islands, then the U.S. would just go ahead and seize them forcefully. So, in 1917, the U.S. purchased the Danish West Indies from Denmark for $25 million, which is roughly $554 million in today's money. St. John, St. Croix, and St. Thomas became the U.S. Virgin Islands and would be the only U.S. territory that was purchased from another imperial power. Conditions on the island improved, but the change came very slowly and people became frustrated. They were especially upset that they hadn't been granted U.S. citizenship and that instead of a democratically elected government, they were governed by the U.S. Navy. In 1932, U.S. Virgin Islanders were finally granted U.S. citizenship but they still didn't receive all of the rights that U.S. citizens on the mainland have. In fact, it wasn't until 1970 that U.S. Virgin Islanders won the right to vote for their own governor. Today, the U.S. territory of the Virgin Islands is run by an elected governor and is under the jurisdiction of the President of the United States. 
the 106,000 U.S. Virgin Islanders can only elect a non-voting representative to the House of Reps and cannot vote for president. So this concludes my very brief overview of the history of the U.S. Virgin Islands and how it became a U.S. territory.